Hello and welcome to my temperate climate urban food forest in the making and over the next couple of days we're having a major overhaul of the backyard and it's going to look amazing you'll see we have two cages here there's a begola frame in the front there that you can see and behind that is a large chicken coop that we used as a wire bed to protect the vegetables at the back there unfortunately this apple tree is positioned right near the entrance and the entrance was not even big enough for a wheelbarrow the weeds got away from me because of the positioning and it was too low so we're about to resolve all those issues the whole design will look better as we move the cage about two meters across and a meter backward so come with us and see what we do okay so <laughs> we're gonna move this and make it taller and move it over because it's creating issues we can't weed in here and we're going to put it in the middle of the yard so we can get all the way around it we can get through here so it's a bit less walking her all the way around here and we've got access to all the walls um so and it's going to be higher so things can grow inside it because i found it wasn't high enough so our issue is that these boys and berries are right at the stage where look it they're ready to um, fruit and it's my first real season of eating them uh, but I haven't threaded them through the wire I've deliberately attached them to the wire on the side so I'm hoping we can unthread it some of the pieces have worked their way through but we're hoping we can pull it through without damaging it too much. This area has got totally out of control with the weeds coming in from the side. So this is my biggest issue in here is controlling the edges, particularly this edge um, because I can't get access on the other side. So the weeds are coming in and I can weed till my heart's not content <laughs> and they're still gonna keep coming in so we need to be able to mulch all the way around and inside here and finally get on top of this so that's what we're going to do today I've got some help today so wish us luck I need to undo those and then gently as I can I'm going to lose some of it but pull it back through and hope it recovers so separating it from the wire and obviously it'll all fall over probably but I'm very glad that I didn't thread it through the wire so gently gently not really gently but sorry sorry plant oh. I'm going to lose some berries, but, you know, we do what we do. It was a bit of effort pulling it out from the grass. The frame itself was pretty light, but we've managed to move it right over there. So it is, see that Russell loop in there? That was in a garden on the outside edge, and it's now in the doorway. And the doorway was behind that apple tree there. So we've moved it back away, shifted it right back towards the back fence. And that little path, that was the doorway there. And that was the path there. Where that current is was on the left of the path. And the wall is now along the right side of the path. So one of the garden beds is slightly inside there. Now here we've lifted it up. It's about a metre in places and maybe three quarters of a metre high. And that is the poor little, <laughs> much smaller boysenberry. Um, it's draped over a chair at the moment until I can put it up again and I'll eventually move it to another spot in the garden. So you can see all that grass here we need to deal with. I, while my husband was doing the door frame, I started weeding this little area here under the 
lemon tree feeding all the weeds to the chooks which they appreciated because they we couldn't let them out while we we're doing this and um, the door frame started to go in I began digging up some of the plants and moving them putting them in pots I've got a strawberries here and the out white alpine strawberry and it was probably good timing for them because that I'm just showing you with my hand now where the front of the bed was, the front of the wire cage was. Um, the white strawberries were heading towards the wild ones, so it was time to divide, you know, make sure that they didn't run into each other so I could tell which was which. Now the door frame's wide enough for a wheelbarrow and this little thing that comes on the chicken doors are far too narrow. I mean, even with a chicken house, you want to be able to clean out the chicken house. The wire that comes with these houses too are definitely not fo um, foxproof. And um, so to use one of those, you'd have to rewire it anyhow. So uh, the reason we used it over the garden is because we bought it for the chicken house and realised how unsuitable it was. So we've ended up building a stable chicken coop. Um, who wants their beautiful girls eaten by a fox? So this morning, my husband has taken the door, the wire off, ready for the door here and taken the old door off, which will, will wire over. Last night and a bit of this morning, I weeded this little area here. Sorry, I'm shaking up because I'm puffed. Um, hang on, let me change hands. No, that doesn't help. Um, and today, while he's off getting the mulch, driving to go get some mulch from my parents' place, um, I'm weeding this. Now, this, see this here? That was the outer edge of the wire house originally. So that was the outside wall, and we've added probably two metres. So we've moved it across two metres which gives us about the same between there and the fence and on the other side. So before it was right against the house and way away from here, we had a big grass area to deal with. And we've got this wretched stuff that is like it digs into the soil and it grips and you try and get it out and when you, it breaks off and leaves roots in the ground. and. So I had that, another tricky um, weeds and another grass that, could, you know, you pull it up and it goes for miles. I don't know my grasses, I'm sorry, but you pull it up and you just get lengths and lengths and lengths of it. Um, that's easy to get out of the garden, actually, because if the garden's nice and friable because of all the mulch rotting down, it comes out very quickly and, and you kind of at least can pull it out to the hard ground further out from your garden and it'll snap there. But this other stuff um, just snaps in the garden. So this is a garden bed that I've got a fair bit planted in it. Because of the timing, I'm a bit reluctant to bring it, pull it out and put it back in. I mean, it's tempting, but um, this morning I'm, because I've got currants in there, so I've got... I've got these and I don't really want to disturb them because some of them, like over there, have got fruit now. So, so I've decided that outer edge can be, at the moment, the inner edge of this bed, which is slightly um, less, it's narrower than what I had before, which is good because I found it was a bit too deep and then it was a bit hard to get in. I was walking on my garden a lot to get into veggies at the back and that. So, and because I've got the walls now, they're really tall, I cannot reach the, the top, the roof. I can probably, I can reach, just reach the top of this. Um, so, we've got a lot of area now to grow things up where I couldn't use it to grow things up before. Now we've got, it's just maximised the growing space heaps because I can grow either side of the walls now. So things up vertically so I've started weeding here and you can see by down here what I was dealing with 
so it would just come in and just fill up the garden and I'd pull some and you know I'd look away for a week or something and then it was completely taken over so we're going to mulch out from the wire house probably at least half a metre um, and so that it can't come back in too quickly into the garden because once it hit the walls and the wire it grew in the wire and it was hard to pull out so if the border's further back i've got more chance of staying on top of it so we're going to mulch really thickly um as long as my parents have got enough mulch which they they may, may have we're going to do that now instead of in here before i divided in half the 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 um doorways in the center so the path was in the center so like I said I had pretty wide beds either side of that They're probably a foot wider than this one um, but this time I'm going to I'll probably move this back eventually so it's even not quite as wide as that one this one I'll make narrower because the, the doors there but I will make one narrow here and stop it before the door and then I want to be able to have paths around a centre garden because I've got, I don't know, three and a half metres at least to grow up from the centre because it's a pitch roof. So I'll be able to, I'll be able to string, um, string, string, <laughs> hang string and um, tomatoes in the middle or, I mean, a lot of choices. I did start this kiwi berry about, I don't know, 10, 12 months ago, and the poor thing really, really struggled. Uh, the birds kept on digging up its roots, and it was out of the cage, obviously, because that was the border. So it's outside the cage. Birds would keep um, uprooting the poor thing. I'd plant it back in, and they'd pull it back out again, and I didn't do this, which I should have. So. So this has a chance to grow now and survive. So I'm going to put some kind of structure up there, um, just something it can climb up and let that have some peace in here, <laughs> away from the birds eventually. So I just threw that around when we let the chooks out yesterday so because the, they were straight into it again. Um, so yeah, so having this, again, having the height and having this here this where are we the rail sorry the way it's right up there the rail right up here where i can only just reach gives me the option of hanging netting to cover the brassicas and all sorts of things so just a bit easier for me when i'm not really all that good at making structures so and my husband's usually really way too busy to be to be doing anything out here so that's it. And over there, you can see the bees coming in. I've got lots of bees. The insect life here is really very happy. Um, over there, just before the house starts, that is the weed mess. I had a lot of thistle and like milk thistle weeds. The grass, that was the, just on the other side of the wall is the existing middle path. That's where I walked up and down and all of that was the garden. So the weeds had come in from the outside. I hadn't been able to contain them. And in the end, I just walked away. I just turned my back and just focused on the rest of the garden. Well, I focused on painting actually, <laughs> and a bit of the rest of the garden. And I just let that go because I knew that it was just, it was gonna take all my time and I would get absolutely nothing else done. So we're gonna pull the big hard bits out of that today. Um, I'll get the machete and chop that off, throw that in the compost and then we're going to hard brush cut that back before we mulch and we'll mulch all of that area and all through here and out the borders. And once it's all mulch then we'll be able to wire it in safely and it can sit for as long as I need it to sit then um, to plant in and I can focus on finishing off the rest of the garden, planting my seeds uh, the spring seeds because it's you know we're getting heading towards the later end of spring here now and I'm a bit behind um, so I've got lots of seeds sprouted inside and well I can get to planting them because I'll have heaps of place, places to plant them so back to weeding
Okay, quick tip for those with hair, I'd like to tie your hair back. If you've got pants, like mine, that have got a zip, put a couple of hair ties in there. <laughs> so, so what I tend to do is forget to bring them out or I'll lose one while I'm gardening. And then I won't go back inside to get it. I just, I, I won't stop. So if you've got it in a pocket, you, um, it can go through the wash and, and they won't, you won't get lost. They won't get lost. You, look how thick it is. Yuck. As the mulch started going down, I used sheets that I had been saving for ages. There was a big pile in the backyard, looked like a big mess. Uh, I finally get to use up all this, these sheets and the mess that's around the backyard to put all this together so the neighbour will be happy. Uh, so I used two thicknesses in some places where I could, where I had enough, and the rest singly. And then a bit of newspaper around the plants. I did end up moving quite a few plants. Okay, over here, the strawberries, it's a bad time to move them. But I've got this awesome little Korean hoe. And I managed to dig them up and I've laid newspaper and then put them on top of the newspaper because I think they were threaded with other grass so rather than try and mulch around them I've decided to move them I have mulched around those and those though I came across a bit of wildlife to what I was while I was working this little frog I didn't even realize I had frogs so that was a pleasant surprise. I was pulling this down and I nearly pulled this stick, which is not a stick. We call this Harry. <laughs> Hello, Harry. He's pretending he's a stick. Go, <laughs> little buddy. Come on, let's put you somewhere safe. Come on. It's so hard to tell that they're they're an insect, they look just, come on. I'm gonna put you in a garden, that's it. Come on, let go. That's the way. Look how big he is. I put you in the garden. I know, he's plain dead. I'm just a stick. Here you go. You go up in the lemon tree. There you go. That's it. Let go of me now. There we go. Oh, that's better, isn't it? <laughs> Not more in the middle there. Okay, things get pretty fast now. Not goes down and you get to see the end result before the planting. But um, there you go, there's all the mulch right from the house over to the fence all the way through that house. And it's made such a difference. And we also put an extra bed in with all, that was kind of sitting up the back corner there. So while we're moving everything around, we used the last garden bed that was up against the fence and used everything that we had around the yard, including all the offcuts of an ornamental pear and made a hugocultural bed. Used the compost out of one of the compost bins and planted some potatoes that had sprouted in the house. So. So we put the compost. It was very sticky, like we put all the sticks at the bottom. The better compost on the top, a little bit of mulch. That was sort of half composted from my parents' place. Uh, and we put that, we dug some potatoes in from last season that I forgot to eat. <laughs> and they all sprouted, they're only small anyhow. And then I've got some sugar cane mulch that has been sitting outside and it's got spoilt, so it's started to rot too. And I'm going to cover it with that, and then we've got another bed done.
The sunflowers have all been planted along here and there's some in there with some potatoes so it'll, they'll be able to sprawl all along this side of this walkway. There's sunflowers, teddy bear three, sunflower, ruby, passion, there was five and there's seven of the large sunflowers that I grew last year. So between these two poles. This is where the compost bin was. We left a little bit of compost on the bottom, planted just the remainder of the potatoes in there. And then I've just planted the large sunflower around here and around here to there. There's 25 seeds in there, at least 25 seeds. I've left gaps where the posts are because I'm planning on growing vines, like taller vines up there. So I've started tomatoes here, sprouted or unsprouted, like if they've, they've sprouted, it's only just showing a slight um, breakthrough of the, the germination from the tissues that I did. Now, these are the varieties. I've got five of each, five seeds of each, and this lot along this edge, I've used the contents of a potato growing bag to, I put it down on top of the mulch, which the mulch is kind of half broken down. I put it on the mulch, then I put the seeds down, then I put some on top. So that one is tomato blush. Then I've got tomato brandy wine. Then that's the Black Russian. Then I've got St. Pierre and Black, Black Crim. There's nothing on that corner, but from that stick starts, that is the pineapple and the German Johnson and then the Tigerella and they finish just here. So hopefully they'll grow. I'll have room for the strongest ones and I'll have them growing all around half of the walls on the outside. The ones on this side, this one, I ran out of the mix on that one. So these two, I went and got some cow manure mix dug a trench, put a little shallow trench of that in, put the compost, compost back over that. Then I got a little, dug a bit of soil out, pulled the weeds out, some native soil from next to the compost bin and put a little layer of that, put the seeds on and a little layer on top and then I've grabbed some spent sugarcane mulch from the garden I planted yesterday and just put a very light sprinkling over there just to keep the moisture in. So using the bare minimum to set them up, worry about deepening that soil, improving that soil and fertilizing and, and that later. I'll just see how they go. Uh, I just need to get them in because we have got some stuff coming up and I actually need to get these seeds just in, see what happens. I've got seeds there. If it doesn't work, I can start in little pots but I'm getting pretty late for my planting so it's best to try and I've found tomatoes pretty robust in the past so we'll see how we go it's really good weather to be planting too it's not overly hot it's uh, mild days but the sun's out the soil's warm and um, things aren't drying out too much so from the current here there's a little box and it kind of goes up into the strawberries a bit, but that's all white, Melbourne white parsnip. Probably about two dozen seeds, approximately. So enough room at the back to put something. And I try to rescue some, what was it? Um, broccoli, this one. Broccoli two of those pot bound broccolis. I've put one near the door and one in there so I don't hold up much hope for them but um, 
I gave them a chance rather than throw them out. I also recycled the seed raising mix from the Salsify and Bordock in there. So just in case, I mean, they look pretty dead to me. But just in case something pops up there, I'm not sure it is. That's what I used. That's the soil I used, just to settle the seeds. And over at the end of the sunflower bed, very end, towards the chook pen, I've put in the curry plant that was in a pot and it was very pot bound and one of the wild strawberries had rooted in it too or a couple of them by the looks i've got two two in there so they can go nuts near the fence line keep the weeds out from next door now i've planted about seven capsicum maconi just through there in that block the malabar spinach that's struggling in the hothouse i think something's nibbling at it I use soil from purslane, so purslane may pop up because the seeds probably will. And I use the soil from the hollyhocks, which had grown and almost made the trace root bound. So who knows? It's probably dead, but just in case, noting that. The two over here are the two pots here, red capsicum. And then over here, I've planted red capsicum here, here, all through behind the strawberry there. I've just put a couple of pots in between uh, to see if these will go, keep growing, the Brussels sprouts. Either end, just there, where that arch is sitting, is the pump, uh, crookneck pumpkin. And down here, they um, I put three seeds in the tissue method, and two sprouted and had about an inch of roots. I planted it in there with just a little tiny bit of native soil in amongst the mulch. With the celery, I'm going to try putting the tissue under some peat and then some seed raising mix and a bit of mulch and see if it'll pop up from the tissue. Okay, I'm gonna, this is sugar. I'm gonna put the water, oh, wrong one, watermelon in. That one's look, looking a bit sad, that seed. But these four, five look pretty happy. So I'll put them in fairly close together so that if I have any casualties, I'll have something. And I'm gonna put them up here because there's nothing climbing here. I've got some beans started over there. There's nothing climbing here and it's in full sun. So they should be happy there. Actually five, so I've covered them with the goldenrod soil. One, two, three, four, hang on. Two, three, four, and one in a corner. I pre soaked some peas for the centre bed inside the wire house and I planted um, beans along the outside edge there. I did struggle with birds digging them up, uh, but most of them grew. Okay, I've planted seven scarlet runner beans in that small section five at the back, two at the front, one hasn't germinated. And then one bean that hasn't germinated yet, I popped in the pot. If it germinates, I'm going to pass that on. And I'm going to pull the grass from here around the elephant garlic and mulch on top of that. So when I used that pot, I found a comfrey leaf um, root in it. It hadn't sprouted like these ones, but it was sprouting underneath. So I put it aside. <laughs> but in my weeding, I've lost it. <laughs> so. So I'm hoping it will be close to the ground and and uh, root somewhere in there. But I've pulled all the grass out of all that area up there a bit, cleared it away from the beetroot, and I've just dropped it back in on top as mulch. Some of it has started to seed, but I don't think the seeds are right, so we, we should be all right. Um, and I'm waiting on some raw peanuts. 
So this potato bed was potato bed. In fact, I found another potato in there and I can see some babies in there. So I've just buried them back over. Is nice and friable all the way to the back. So I've ordered some raw peanut peanuts. So I'm going to plant them in here in the middle. So I'll have zucchini there, the scarlet runner beans that can grow year after year there. I've got the border of pots keeping everything in. The elephant garlic, I'm pretty sure that raspberry died when I planted it. The blueberries going well. It is exposed to the birds for the berries, but it's going well. I've mulched around it and the yeah, elephant garlic, so I'll just fill the rest of the space with the um, peanuts when they arrive. And while I'm in this corner, I need to pick some of the broad beans. Look at them, aren't they beautiful? Very first ones I've been able to pick. I didn't get a chance to <laughs> tie back up the young berry, but it fruited and um, I've been picking those. And I went on to plant lots of new seedlings that I just bought in, uh, a bunch of seedlings from a local into the for the wire bed just to do a bit of a catch up. And um, I've been fighting birds and a few mice, but most things are going well. So I'm looking forward to a very good harvest when everything takes off because the wire bed is pretty full now, just a couple of weeks later. It's also that time of year where I've got to do a bit of a bug hunt and set out a few natural traps and um, see the earwig damage there. So I make traps out of soy sauce and oil and I put that amongst my beans because they were being eaten. But one thi once things take off, I will show you the result of this area and um, hopefully I can show you pretty and lush a little garden in a very short period of time so i'd love it if you would support my channel by liking subscribing and of course sharing and um, chat below if you want to know anything or have a chat i love to hear from those who watch my videos and share the passion for growing edibles in our backyards or on our property Thanks for watching. See you next time.